Hello and welcome to the Impact Dynamics Podcast. Your name is Andy. My name is Rusty. <laughs> My name is Andy Little. <laughs> yeah, we've done that bit. We're talking about scopes tonight and giving stuff away and That's such. It. Donny Eats. Match director, mate. Match director. <laughs> Hello, Andy. <laughs> Hooray! Hooray! <laughs> Hope that's enough. We need your vote. Now we've caught up to where we are on the podcast. Right, go on back. Roll the outro. <laughs> that was possibly our best out intro ever. That's it. Have we caught up? That's the real question. Do we know what we're <laughs> do doing? We were, do we know what we're doing? Have, we do tonight. Have we pressed record? Have we pressed record, Josh? Oh, no. No, we don't know what we're doing. Right. No. no. We are fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, good. Hi, Josh. Josh. Hello. Hi, Hi guys. Hi. Hello. Thanks going? for the um, vote of my doubt there. That just <laughs> vote of my doubt. doubt. <laughs> I was going to say vote of confidence and I changed my mind halfway through. If we I did need be- a gin. We, if we didn't before, we do now. There's a gin in front <laughs> of you. There I've got go. a gin. You've got a gin? Sure. Possibly. Water. Uh, water. <laughs> are you back uh, on the vodka? We are back. Mm. We are back. We, uh, we, we are talking very – we're going to deep dive into scopes. We did a, yep. we did a scope video recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, that, that aside, yes. are you well, Andy? You I'm good? doing well. You're good. All right, cool. Yeah. Josh, you will. Yep, yep. You're doing, doing well. Right. Ticking along. Cool. You know what's coming up in a couple of weeks? <laughs> the Golden Yeats. The Golden Yeats are coming up in a couple of weeks. Now, That's for it. those who don't know, the Golden mm. Yeats are our end of year. Yeah, sorry. I've got one of those glasses that like- it just scared me just, for a second. Just, I was like, whoa. And just, oh, it, you've got that glass got, out again. You've got to be unnerved uh, yeah. about it. Yeah. And so you oh. can just, yeah. There we go. Okay, cool. Anyway, but so that's I've eat. purposely hidden that glass like previously. Oh, that really? way I don't accidentally grab it. I hate it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Let's eat it. <laughs> So, does this make you nervous? Um, so, the Golden Eats. Yes. <laughs> Very distracting, like this glass. The Golden Eats are, are our annual awards where we give them out to whether the people want them or not. And we've got a whole stack of categories. You guys can go and vote for the majority of the categories are available to vote on impactonomics.com.au. If you happen to be in Adelaide or can get to Adelaide, you can come and join us in this room mm-hmm. on the 16th of December uh, for the live recording of the Golden Utes. Yeah. Where we will decide all the winners and losers and the people who actually get the awards. Come hang out. And come yeah. hang out yeah. and, and chat and do all these things. And some some guys are going to join us on the show. Mm. and we have Watch Josh s- press buttons. Exactly right. Uh, yeah. And we're going to have uh, all sorts of uh, – we're going to have some guests and some, yep. some awards. Uh, we've got a few things to give away. So we're mm. hardy. Now – I shot a hardy rifle the other week. Uh, you shot a hardy rifle the other week, did you? I'm pretty sure I did. Yeah, this yeah. is the, the PRS finale. And the hardy guys gave us some of these shirts. So you got the hardy logo on the side there and the, the hardy hybrid, which is the rifle we shot the other week uh, on there. What do you? What have you got going on there? Okay, you got the logo hybrid. on the front. Yeah, yep. yeah. And, I reckon and then that's a diagram of some things on the back. That's the bolt head at the bottom it there. It certainly is. And, and that's then, part of the bolt because that's the bit that you – yeah, that's the bolt face, uh, the bolt. In, into the into the bolt. Yep. Isn't that the lugs? The lugs. Lugs? That's yep. the lugs. Yeah. The lugs. yeah. Cool. Lug that one. Um, and so we're going to give these shirts away to the guys who will vote. So go and vote, impactonmx.com.au. Right. Go and vote. And, and we're just going to randomly give these away on the night to those who have voted, some people in the room. Uh, this one is, that's the one I had. Uh, and then this is, uh, the, oh, this is the hybrid as well. And then you got a little little low key. Very tidy. Yeah, all yeah, of the very hybrids. Good. Sorry? All, all the, hybrid. of the hybrids. That's, that's right. It. And so we've got those giving away. We're going to give away some uh, some uh, old Precision Shooting Podcast Woo-hoo. branded uh, uh, All Aspect shirts. I think we've got some of those to give oh, away on cool, the night. Cool. We've got some projector warehouse hats, some scoped out stuff. Yep. All sorts of merch to give away both in the room yep. and to those who are watching. And can we get a T-shirt cannon? I mean, we can, Just, but, you know, I'd prefer yeah. a yeet cannon that night. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I mean, we're cannon. Like, uh, we're honestly, a golden yeet cannon. I mean, we Whoa. could, but the thing is, Josh. Right. The thing is, a, a, a t-shirt cannon uh, is for big stadiums. Mm. Now, this room is not big. Now, it's not. It's it's fine. We fit a few people in here, but yeah. I got a feeling, Andy. Grab one of these shirts. All right. Grab yeah. one of these shirts, and we're going to see whether or not we have big enough cannons to yeet these shirts to the end of the room. So I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Am I still in shot if I go here, Josh? We you still sure okay? Are. Yeah. So, that's why we cool. have more than one camera. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we're going to try and yeet and get to the back of the wall. The you back wall. Oh, look at you go. You've got a strategy going on here. Roll right. it up. Roll it up, yeah. How's your, um, yeah. How's your spin? How's your arm? Yeah. You've got to warm no, it up. It's not, it's not great. Josh is moving everything out of the way. We're not that way. Oh, right. I see what you're doing. You're turning lights up. I thought it was, Josh right. is in the back. He's going to try and catch it. I don't want you to catch it. We're trying to hit the back wall. We're trying to hit the back wall. All right, so Josh is at the back of the room. Okay, good. Josh is going right. to be – all right, Andy, you, you're welcome to go first. It was your idea. All right, Canon 1. <laughs> it wasn't your idea. 
I'll, right, t- I'll take it. Cannon take one. It. Cannon one. Line those guns up. Here where, we go. Where is he? I'm going to aim for him. He's just over there. All right. Cannon one. Ready? Yep. Good. All right. Here we go. Can you get the back wall? Not quite. Oh, no. You're about a you're about a meter short. Ooh. You're about a meter short. Um, all right. I'm gonna. This is probably not great for the. Oh, you're standing vision, up. I'm gonna stand up. I'm gonna stand. Oh. I got no chance. Here we go. All right. You ready? Straight ready? into the studio. Straight light. in. That there was back go. wall. That there was back we, wall. That was back wall. Both a golden yeek. <laughs> uh, Josh has got the cannons. Oi, We've done out. this the wrong way. Yeah. Right. So we're going to give away some shirts that have been slightly thrown. Yeah. Josh um, will yeet these at people. That's right. So Josh is the yeet cannon and he will uh, yeet the shirts around yeah. to the, uh, the punters in the room yeah. as well as Will. And as his idea, we've got to paint him gold. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah, that worked well for that chick from the man with the golden gun. <laughs> she did not do well. Anyway, um, and we'll enjoy, Andy, you and I will yeet some some shirts off to those guys who are yep. watching and those guys who have uh, yep. voted. So there'll be all sorts of merch going out. So 16th cool. of December, That's note it. that in your diaries uh, or whatever the hell people use these days. Tattoo what, that on your diary? forearm. Tattoo that on your forearm and we mm. will see you guys there. Yep. You can jump on Facebook and the, the event details are on there. Um, mm. Yeah, that's it. True story. Are we going to talk about that? We've probably got some other stuff we're going to talk about. Oh, scopes. Something about scopes. Scopes. Yeah. So we did a video recently about scopes. Yep. And uh, the, the video was covering a bunch of things. Now I did a video a long time ago about the four key things that I look for in a scope. Yes. And these are PRS-related scopes. And so yep. I talked about first focal plane, mm-hmm. uh, it was MRAD, mm-hmm. uh, dialable turrets, mm-hmm. and also uh, the radical itself. Yes. Would you agree they're four pretty f- key elements of a scope? Yep. Um, what else we got there? Parallax. I wasn't just looking oh. for it. Would you, would you agree that the, those are four key elements? They definitely are. Okay, yep. great. Yep. And then if you were to add a fifth one in, which yes. is you're, you're leading this already, you've given it away. Well, you haven't given it away because it's not there. If you were to add a fifth one into yes. the equation, what would it be? Um, a parallax that is visible, easily adjustable, mm-hmm. and preferably for myself yep. has – meter markings or graduations on it okay. as in zero to infinity, not just a lines. A lines. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Mm. Interesting. I went with zero stop. I, this is the oh, video yes. I added an extra element. And this was yes. one of the, the feedback from that first video and mm-hmm. I didn't disagree. I just yeah. I limited myself to four. They yep. are the four I'd choose. Yep. If there was a fifth one, mm-hmm. it would have been zero stop. And zero stop is, is yes. pretty critical on a PRS because you want to be able to wind your scope yes. back down to zero and do that. So you guys can go check out that video where we yep. delve into that. Uh, that was late one night before I went to the airport, wasn't it, Josh? It was. Yeah. That was, nice. that was on that zero stop thing, in those, cl- in those categories, is there yeah. that many that don't have zero stop? That tick all those other boxes? <laughs> No. no, most of them do now, but we mm. were talking in that original video, we were talking about some of the cheaper options. Yes. Yep. And yep. zero stop is one of the things that gets yeeted out of that yep. equation pretty quickly to, for, for budgets. Yep. I'd, I'd, yeah. I would almost go, if you're looking at setting up a 22 rim fire mm-hmm. trainer, mm-hmm. to have a zero stop on that is more critical than, than having a center fire for the distances okay, we but, shoot. Yeah, but dis- like yeah. Uh, of those four – Key elements. Oh. Are you eating one of those as to what's more critical on a rimfire? Um, MRAD, the reticle choice, the turrets that are exposed, and first focal plane. First focal plane is definitely important. Yeah. Uh, adjustable turrets. Yeah, that's still yeah. pretty important. It's pretty important. The re- the reticle. I find the reticle is very much personal choice between people. Yeah, but having know, a reticle that is is important is critical. Yeah. Yeah. It's all pretty having, critical. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so I didn't I didn't get the yeah. the, the, the full but, wrong. But I think. Um, but I, I, I get you, your point. I yeah. get your point yeah. that that you're much more inclined to dial a few additional uh, yep. uh, times around. Yep. So for, for those who are playing along at home. Mm. And a zero stop and not familiar with that. Yep. Most scopes, almost all scopes, you can reset the turret to show zero when you're at your zero point. So mm-hmm. let's say that'd be 50 meters or 100 meters or 135 or 200 or whatever it may be. Yep. You can adjust your turret so that visually, so vis, try that word again, visually, visually. It's wow, close I enough. can't believe I've. Visually. Vis- so you, oh, what gosh. it looks like, <laughs> it's not just me then. So your turret shows yep. zero yes. at the point that you want it to show zero Correct. at. But is that if you visually look at it? Go away. Yes. So uh, with your eyes, uh, if you the, – the option for a zero stop means it'll put like a, a, an internal stop there that you can't actually dial underneath. Yeah, it's a Be physical that, hard stop. 
Yep. Be that at the zero point, mm-hmm. be that a few clicks under intentionally. Yep. Where, wherever that may lie, it'll put a, a hard stop on. Yep. There. And that's so you can't dial and end up like a full rotation out and yep. such. It's pretty well so you don't, yeah, lose your zero. You yep. know where that zero is consistently. Yep. And and you're right, at this stage, certainly in Australia, you're more likely to do multiple rotations of your turret mm-hmm. on a rim fire setup than you are on a center fire setup. Now that's not always true because as you we start to see PRS matches stretch out further and See? further and further and yep. start seeing sort of one and a half, two rotations mm-hmm. go on dials. Uh, that's where it starts uh, being really crisp. Yep. Mm. Right. So we did this video and we covered off on on those five points being yep. there. And that we you, you could sit Aussie dollars mm-hmm. under a thousand dollars and get all five of those. Comfortably. Right? Yep. And then we started looking beyond that dollars wise, mm-hmm. and of course, you know the, the the big one I left at the end of the video was optical clarity, which is mm-hmm. a big factor, and that's sort of one of the, the hard things to quantify, particularly in the video, mm-hmm. particularly when you're like sitting in a room, being like, oh, this one's better optically, I think, than that one, maybe perhaps at yep. three meters away. Yep. But it, it is a, it is a big factor. Yes, right? definitely. And I was speaking to a, a guy today who was having problems resolving target bullet holes at 300 meters plus with his with his you know thousand dollar scope, mm-hmm. which makes sense. You start getting better optical resolution in that, and you start seeing further away. Uh, so it starts seeing detail further away. Yep. Not necessarily needing more magnification. Mm-hmm. So we uh, we went through uh, sort of all those sort of things, uh, and then we started getting you know sort of seeing uh, that as you spend more money, there's more and more features now available. Yep. yep. In scopes. So uh, what are we going to do, Andy? You and I are going to run downstairs, and we're going to grab. Four scopes. Ooh. We want to sort of t- cover some some interesting bits of it. I might grab one or two extra, and you might grab one or two less, just because uh, you know I, where they I, are. I know where they are, yeah. and I know what they are a little bit better. <laughs> However, Josh is giggling, yep. but Josh doesn't realise that he now needs to carry the show for a couple of minutes. That's uh, right. I've already realised that. <laughs> <laughs> Josh. You have uh, just gone through the process of getting your license. I have. You've been around the PRS world for a couple of years now. Yeah. You have shot multiple uh, rimfire matches and been to lots and lots of centerfire matches and talked to people. So we're going to let you wax lyrical <laughs> for a couple of minutes while we go and grab some scopes on some of the key things you've learned about scopes, some of the things that you've learned that have been important Cool. He is looking so I, nervous. I'm going to drag this out <laughs> like, so long. I'm going to go to the toilet. I'm going to get another drink. I'm going to – it's a bit cool up here. I might get a jacket. Anyway, Andy, are you yes. ready? Oh, I'm ready. Let's Can go. Can I just edit it so that it's like 30 seconds no. and that's it? No, if this is not at least 90 <laughs> yeah, seconds that, to two that. minutes, uh, we will be disappointed. So, guys, I will, yeah. we'll leave you in the safe, comfortable hands of yeah. Josh. Yeah, good luck. And he will talk to you about not what he hands. has learned about optics I'm in the last couple start. of years. Let's go. <laughs> Well, while these guys run, are you going to run so you're out of shot and everything? Actually, no, the shot's not there anyway. Yeah. So I have gone through the process and I've been very lucky to play with, I guess, some more expensive stuff and some very cheap stuff. And so I, one thing that I have learned, and I guess I've been spoiled with it, is the higher end of the spectrum, you get all the bits, the clarity, um, and then you, you drop down to the lower end of the spectrum and you you do notice it, especially when you're going and putting an ATAC R against a um, Vortex Venom. You you do notice it. I'm now wondering what they're going to get. I'm guessing, this is going to be my predictions, I'm going to try and guess while they're gone. I reckon one of them's going to be a Venom or a Strike Eagle. I'm not sure which ones we have. Someone's definitely grabbing an ATAC R. Definitely a Baris XDR Pro. Uh, There's a Falcon Endura. I reckon that's that one. Uh, I reckon they're going to grab an NX8. I reckon they're going to grab... Ooh, what else do you have? There's a Steiner Predator. I reckon that's it. Hurry up. You done yet? Yeah, so I'm now in the process of trying to work out what I, I am choosing because I, looking at all the options, I've got to play with everything from a Venom to an ATAC R. Um, there's lots of options in between there. Um, I've noticed a zero stop, like they have said previously in this podcast, is absolutely crucial. Um, I've found myself so many times just end of a stage is a habit now just back to zero all done and dusted makes it super easy oh i hear footsteps i made predictions from what i thought you were going to get i want to i want to see how close i was oh i got one of those oh there is some you grabbed one i didn't expect to see we're back. Oh, see, I just went very much down to PRS focus. Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, so yeah. do we, except we've yeah. got extras. 
Yeah, PRS <laughs> and some. Yeah. <sighs> All right. We so All right. Uh, we have some scopes Oh, yeah. Now, let's uh, get the cards on the table. Andy, you were sponsored by Carlos. Yes. There are no Carlos here. That's okay. Only because we didn't have any downstairs. <laughs> All right, but we just want to yep. put that forward and, and perhaps there's a couple of features you will talk about about your colours. Yeah. I ran, so I'm going <laughs> to. How'd that go how, for you? Yeah, well, I was going to say, how did it go for you? Oh, yeah, just blabber along like normal. <laughs> Good. Nothing different, really. It's like what we do. <laughs> right. So you've learned, you've learned the style very well. So, uh, and yes. then also, I, I'm involved with scoped out, so there's why downstairs we've got a whole stack of scopes. Um, <laughs> is it just, it's not just in the just basement. We just have in scopes in the basement. This is, yeah. this is not just my collection, <laughs> correct. Um, so but we, we have a, 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 an array here. Now, we have gone a little mm. bit nicer, Bill. What we're looking for here, and we haven't limited it just to PRS scopes. We've got right. a couple of oddballs in here. Yep. Um, but... Uh, we we thought we'd bring these ones up here mm. because we'd be able to delve into some of the features yep. uh, of these particular scopes uh, in in a little bit more depth, yep. right? Uh, and sometimes they're not exactly correct, but we've got some ideas here. Yes. So, Andy, do you want to kick off? Do you want me to kick off? What would you like to, to right. start with? Well, should we start with the ones that maybe aren't so PRS? No. We should hold them to the end because that would throw the discussion off sideways All <laughs> very <righty>. quickly. <laughs> let's do this. So let's stay <laughs> stay within the PRS realm initially. All right. Mm. Well, I might start with this Vortex. You should. Yeah. That's the Strike Eagle. That's Strike probably Eagle. the cheapest one on the table at the moment. Yeah, that's cheapest. one that I picked. There you go. There you go. So I picked this one because a lot of the turrets that you do see, um, you know, when I say a lot, I'm only seeing a couple, <laughs> <laughs> but they'll show – one revolution of numbers. Yes. Okay. Yep. I see. I see your point. Yep. And um, yeah, I like where this is going. Yep. So one revolution of numbers, and then once you get a full rotation, whether that's around to ten or fifteen. Let's pick on. Let's pick on this one here. The vortex here. So you've yep. got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and at that point there, you're back to zero. Yep. Right. Which then you have to do math. Well. <laughs> I'm cheating because I'm hiding something on this one, but we'll get yep. back to this one in a moment. All right. That is that is not incorrect, so we'll yes. just wind that one back for a moment. Yep. Carry on. This one stood out to me. Um, I do now see that it's in our way. <laughs> but <laughs> you look so gutted about that as well. Anyway, sorry, carry on. That it's the feature. same on the MRAD that version. That is a feature we <laughs> – Yeah, correct. Um, but just above these main numbers are – another set of numbers. So if you go one right round two, because it's in MLA, it mm -hmm. goes right up to 24. You will hit 25 at zero. And just above that zero, it has the number 25. Yep. So for the people maybe shooting um, further distances or with a rim fire, those numbers do come in handy for a quick sort of reference. You don't then have to look at 25 plus four and then do the math. It's right above, it's 29. Yep. Story checks out. So, Good. So the best version of that, I like, yes. like where you're going with that. The best version yep. of that, this Zeiss does that as well, but we're going to put it up for a different reason. Yep. Josh, I don't know how quickly you can bring this one up, but the T5XI, the Steiner T5XI is the best example of this particular setup yep. because the mm. T5XI has your has little windows and each of the numbers are hidden in this little window. Yep. So as you wind around, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, I think. Sure. And as you click past 12, maybe mm -hmm. 11, 10, some number in there. Yep. The 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 numbers, the, the, the section that's got the numbers either drops down or another part drops down, whatever happens. Yep. And it changes. And as you die around, it's like a magic trick. Yeah. And then 13, 14, and 15, 16 well, appears. Where did those numbers where, come from? Exactly right. Where the numbers were, now they're different. Amazing. Uh, but what is great is that when you're looking at the dial, whatever number you're seeing is correct. Yeah, that's you're not it. looking for a second row. You're mm -hmm. not looking for like – uh, one plus a revolution, so I'm on, I'm on 11 or whatever it might be. Yep. The number you're looking at is the number you're looking at. And yep. that, that is my favourite so far, mm -hmm. all-time favourite uh, elevation turret yep. from a visual po point of view. I said it visual. Visual, correct. Yep. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, uh, Josh, I don't know if you've been able to dig one of those up, but the turrets on those ones are pretty – I'm sure there's an overlay of that, the, the uh, particular yep. turret uh, as we're talking about it. Yeah. They are fantastic, uh, fantastic optic. Uh, yep. The reasons I, yeah, they're a great scope, beautiful glass. Yep. The reticle lets them down a little bit. Okay. Uh, the available reticle, I yep. should say. So, but they are, uh, that turret is sensational. Mm. It, yeah. It's straightforward, it's simple, you know, yeah. Mm. It, uh, you can't confuse it. Yep. Absolutely. That's so that, that'll bring me on to the Zeiss. So it's my turn now. All right. Um, the Zeiss here, 
Now, we, we did a video, we did a couple of videos on this size actually, uh, and this size is, is really good. One of the things I did not realize until someone in a video brought it up in one of our videos. I'm yeah. Like, oh, that's a really good point. The numbers on this dial are really good, are really big. They are. They are massive. They're really easy to see. Now, mm -hmm. I am finding this. I, I, I mean, here oh. I am looking my glorious self. Yes. Wait for it. Right behind me oh. is a chunky set of glasses. You should have asked I, me to bring mine. I can't actually see a whole lot without without them. Josh, you're very much in the way you're wearing I, your glasses. I am. Because you're actually looking at things. I don't have to see a lot of things. I'm going to put them there to remind me how human I really am. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, so so, so um, speaking of being human and having your eyesight going here, um, those numbers are really big and visible. Yes. And and legitimately, um, there are got, there are there are companies that make little um, magnifiers that sit here that, yep. that show you because you look at something like. What's the best example we got well, here? Even then. The strike eagle. That's yeah. a great example. Those little numbers, particularly the ones at the top, yep. only hard to see. Yeah. Right. And so you get some guys who are, you know, a little bit older or a mm -hmm. little bit more experienced. Yep. Being being around and they uh and they look at that and they're like, I'm struggling to see what that is. Yep. Particularly because it's got, you know, brackets around it and there's all sorts of things going on there. Mm. You get a magnifier on it, or <laughs> You gotta have some big chunky ass numbers That's like it. that, which is which is good, and it's not it's not a bad thing at all. So I quite I quite like that on the Zeiss. There's other mm. cool features and there's big tire and stuff, but those numbers stand out to me on this particular yep. scope. Yep. And in all honesty, because that does, I mean, yeah, there's yep. lots of factors, yep. but that does decide whether you're hitting or missing. You get those oh, numbers definitely. wrong, you yep. are missing, no yep. matter how well you shoot. That's it. You gotta get those numbers right. And if that's a big factor in what you're doing, yep. man, you, you may not be able to wear glasses to look through that scope that's correctly. It. Yep. Having that is far more critical than and all the young people are watching, yeah. giggling at us. You're going to be going, oh, you can't even see the microphone. Like a, this Sennheiser brand microphone I'm using um, is uh, it's, it's not. It's sure, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know that. Yeah, exactly right. That's the the point is. Um, if you all, put your glasses on, you would have known that. Yeah, there we go. All right, good. We'll do this episode with glasses on. So the the uh, the Shaw microphone that I'm using, it's such a big it's mm. a big factor, and so your mm. eyes do go on you. This yep. is the fact, and uh, yep. and so being able to have those those large dials is actually is actually a really good yep. benefit. And and not even if your eyes are going, but during the the rush of mid stage and no, dialing, yeah. just everything's having, a problem. Yeah, yeah. You just it's easier. Mm. Yeah. Um, Speaking of easier, what else have you got in front of you that you'd like to point out? Can I out? touch on something else? On oh, the you can. The feature on the Why Zeiss? not? That's what we're here to do. That's Talk. it. We're not, guys, we're not particularly promoting specific brands or something. We're yep. looking at features that we like across various brands and yep. scopes and stuff. So, um, now, I vaguely remember. Let me have a quick what was What was actually quite funny, we ran downstairs and I didn't particularly tell Andy we were doing this until on the show. I said we, we were going to pick up some scopes. He's like, oh, should we go some scopes before the show? I'm like, no. No. So he didn't. He wasn't prepared. And he I was went like, down yeah. there and was like, what do I grab? <laughs> <laughs> so so this is very much stuff that caught our eye as we yes. walked downstairs. Sorry, um, back onto the Zeiss. So as you as you obviously go up in quality, your clicks and the way that the clicks feel oh, on yes, scopes true. Uh, true. are quite nice. Now. Thank you. That yep. every ten mils or one mil, sorry, every tenth or one mil. Point point one of a mil. No, no. Oh, I'm, every I'm, ten, I'm yeah, every every ten, ten mil. There is a no, not ten. Every point one. Yep. Yeah, correct. Every point one. Or every one mil. <laughs> there's. No, they're different. Point one is different to one mil. What do you What do you say? Well, I know what you, I know where you're going with this. Okay. But you haven't explained <laughs> it very well. There every is, every even number mil. No, yes. even that's that's the even worse <laughs> player than saying. <laughs> Every full mill. <laughs> Every full mill of rotation. Yep. Yep. There's there is a, a clunk. A, there's a clunk. There is a larger. A click. Yeah. Every a, point one is a click. Yep. Every. Solid mill. <laughs> <laughs> Every, I don't know, what do you call it? Every mill. Every mill. Every mill. Yeah. Yeah. Not Every mill. Yep. So. There is more of a, a solid indent. Yep. And you can, you can feel it when it locks in. You can. And if you're a bit light on it. It'll actually stop at those one mil marks. I'm feeling it. it now. It's it's yep. it's glorious, actually. <laughs> this is very so, much the old person scope, isn't it? Like the fact that that you can feel well, that, and it's just oh. Or cool. even even if you if you're at during the night time, yep, and you need to adjust it, and oh, you can like yeah. you can sort of count it and go, oh yep, yep there's one, one, two, three, four, yeah, because click, 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 you get two, one, two, three, four. four, 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 four. I mean, one to, one to ten is pretty easy, but you start going to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, something, that is it becomes difficult. Whereas yep. you just go clunk. 
Yep. There's one mil. Sounds there's like two Peter mil. Griffin. There's yeah. three mil. Yeah. Yep. Right. <laughs> yep. Good. So yeah. that's glorious, isn't it? That's that's something on that scope that I noticed when I first used it, and I was like, yeah. hey, that's you know, that's, that's very good. I could find a use for that. Right. Back in yep. your own scopes. Oh, back what in my you, own scopes. What have you got there? Let's go to this sig. Okay. Now. I don't believe it's this model. <laughs> this is an example of what could exist. Yes. Yeah. Um, but a bubble level, integrated bubble level. Or integrated level. Integrated level. No bubble. No, bu- no bubble. <laughs> if you're getting integrated bubble levels. Yeah, something's going on. Yeah, something's not right. So one of so, the models is six. Yes. Has a has a level plex reticle or something along those lines. Yeah. And it's a digital internal level that will have two little arrows, one on either side of the reticle. Mm. And it will, as you as you twist the rifle, so when you're on that stage you talked about in the last episode of mm. the finale where you're on the piss on sideways, yes. the reticle would have been yelling at you going, you're not level, Andy. Yeah, yeah. It's actually really customised. It tells you your name. But it'll <laughs> tell you, it'll it'll show you visually, yep. Yep. Uh, which is what we've struggled with tonight, mm. that you are not level. Mm. And then you twist your rifle back Most and it'll go green on both sides or orange or so. It'll tell okay. you, it'll confirm for yep. you that you are level. Yep. You're that right. That is the um, SIG Tango 6. There you go. That is one of the models that has it. Yeah, may so, also be other models. I'm not sure, but yeah. you are correct, Josh. But a, f- a feature like that could save you a couple of points. Yeah, it would have saved you a couple of points that day. Yeah, wouldn't yeah it? probably would have. Yeah, so that's a cool so, little feature. So an internal, is, you don't have to look. I mean, we all have bubble levels hanging off our our guns on the side here and, mm. and on the scope rings and all this sort of gear. But that one there is is literally in the tube, and yep. you are, you are seeing it as well as your reticle. Yeah, very very cool. That's it. Yeah, okay, another another little feature that helps. Mm. All right. All right, I will move on to this. Now, this is the one I alluded to before about dialing. And we dialed a, a full rotation. I kind of held my thumb in a particular location. And the reason for that, I don't know how good a shot we're going to get. Josh, do I bring it up there? Is that the way to do it? Yep. And I'll bring it up there, and you'll see that this little thing pokes out as we go through to the next rotation. Andy, can you see that? Well, there you go. There you go. So, actually, let's run around to the next rotation. I oh, know we've, we've locked off. <laughs> this actually, this actually will uh, wind it back down there. Right. So that's the problem with here. Once we get to a second rotation, which this scope's not set up to do, obviously when you zero, zero it, it will. Them. Yep. But that'll pop out again. Uh, but this is this has a little indicator to tell you which resolution you are, and if you go to the next one, it'll pop out again with another line on it. You see a second resolution. Yep. So. Scopes with those sort of little features are good. Now, this one's got a locking turret. Now, so yes. plenty of scopes have a locking turret. Yep. Some do, some don't. This one here, you notice it won't, it'll dial, but when we push it back down, that won't go anywhere. Locked, yeah. Right? Yep. Works on the windage as well. Push that down. Nice. It's locked there. All right? Yep. Now, this is a relatively older scope. I mean, this is a Gen 2 Razor, mm. uh, but these are still you know, reasonably popular. Yeah. And, they, yeah, the, the locking turret is one of the, the, the happy features about them that people yep. love. Yep. Um, and then this one also has, let's see if I can remember how to do this because it's a little, been a little while since I've run these. Uh, this has illumination on it. And all you need to do, again, like the locking turrets, is just pull it out and that's where your numbers are, right? And that's where you can see. You can dial your illumination and you push it in it's locked as well. So mm. they are a, a – Hidden feature. Hidden feature, one of the cool little sort of uh, uh, ways that, you know, you, you forget how they work and <laughs> you spend the last three minutes of the podcast trying to work out how to turn the el- uh, illumination on. But Do uh, do these ones have the little ring on the inside that says unlocked? Sorry? Do they have when you oh, pull when it you out? Oh, when you lift the turret up? Yeah. Pull it out, yeah. So no, on, there is one of the other razors where you can pull it out and it actually says unlock on it. So that way you know whether you've got it locked or unlocked. I do not believe this one is that version. Okay, no. cool. Must just be the, I think it's the 1 to 10. Oh, okay. Yeah, cool. Nice. The Gen 3, 1 to 10. So anyway, mm. that's uh, that's one of the, uh, the the little features that is quite cool. Both the, uh, the indication of which rotation you're on. Yep. Wind that back down and make that disappear. And the locking turrets is quite a uh, cool mm. thing on this particular yep. scope. Plus it's an absolute beast. They're rock solid. Yeah. So. What else have you got hiding over there, Andy? Right. Speaking of rock solid. Yeah. Night Force Attacker. Oh, yeah. Rock solid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now, why did I grab this one? Oh, I do like a capped windage. Oh, so, yes. The capped windage. So, I also have a scope here with a capped windage. Not yeah. that one. I do find that uh, when we run PRS, mainly I'd say the majority of the time we are holding wind. It mm-hmm. is. It is – very rare that I will dial wind. Yep. If I do, it's only when there's a consistent steady wind throughout the day. Yep. So not the finale. No, definitely not. <laughs> um, 
Is this also? I don't know. No, not it's locking. not locking. So oh. the ATAC R has a little uh, beauty ring that goes on. So you, so you can see from but taking that cap off and but with this burrus here, I'm taking the cap off. Yep. There's a thread exposed. Now, if yes. you're going to run that scope with that exposed windage all the time, yep. that thread has got a good chance just yep. from general wear and tear yep. getting bumped and scuffed. That thread is pretty fine thread, could get damaged. Mm. They are very smart because they come with a little ring that goes around to cover that thread. Very nice. Right? Really, really, really good. Yeah. I, like, I like that they feature. They think about it. Yep. Yep. Um, <laughs> the only thing that I don't like about that is it's a, uh, you pay more for this uh, fancy colored scope. Yeah. And yep. you end up with a black windage dial. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the, the, that is that just is stands case. out from the crowd. It's a, well, yeah, correct. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of which, I'm holding a burris, but anyway, yep. we'll get back to that in a moment. Um, the the seven thirty five is what was yep. a it was a big factor on this particular scope. It was yep. a big elevation range for a PRS type scope, mm -hmm. uh, and that is you know that is uh, certainly set the bar. Some of the others have followed. The Razor have jumped up to a six to thirty six, and the the, the yeah. March and the uh, the Zero Compromise are an eight to forty. Yep. yep, yep. It's not too often we go to thirty five, but if you have a, a stage where you are prone and you need to get really accurate or or for any sort of load development on paper. Sure. Yeah. They're having that extra power. If you've got it, you can use it. Yep. If you don't, you can't. The other joy of something like that with <laughs> – well, well, well put. That's it. Um, the other joy of something like that is mm. that you, um, you're you going to be in the optical sweet spot on that right. scope the majority of the time. Yes. Right? So you're not at the top end of the power, which yep. is going to put you at sort of a diminished view. Most people won't pick it up, but, but generally speaking, it's not as nice to look yep. at 35 as it is to look at 20. That's it, true. And so that's uh, that's one way of achieving that uh, yep. as well. The other thing that's interesting on there, I think you're about to cover, is that the the magnification does the whole area. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So when you when you wind up your magnification, you're turning essentially the full eye box and um, yeah, the ocular end of the uh, scope. Yep. Mm. Now the other thing that I just noticed on here, on these sort of top end, another little feature you can have a removable. Um, Throw section, lever. Throw lever or, yeah. or an additional throw lever to put on it um, mm -hmm. where sometimes other brands might not offer that. This is uh, this is true. This is mm. true. Mm. Anything um, else on that one or is that we – No, just the cool colour. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Apart from the windage star. Oh, they've got a digital <laughs> illumination there, a button rather than a dial of some sort. There's a button. Well. That one there. That's the button there. That button. That's a button? That buttony button. Yeah. That's cool. There you go. And it's I, a button. I, if I'm not mistaken, they got different color illumination. There may not be a battery in that one, Andy. Yeah, there is. Sure, there is. Okay. Does it change to a green or you just got red? Just red. Just red. What if you hold it down? Does, does it change anything? No. Okay. I can't tell when it's off though. No, it's still on. Anyway, it's getting there, there's a few settings. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. I'm glad we've had this discussion. What was that, the Tremor 3? That is the Tremor 3. Oh, fantastic. Well, Andy's playing with a Tremor 3 <laughs> <laughs> and very excited about it. I don't know it. how to Also, oh, they come off. with decent cops. Uh, co cap. Cops? Caps. Caps. <laughs> they come with cops. cops. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> wow. All right, cool. So uh, let's let's move on to a different move part on. of the show. All right. Before we go into this Burris and the remaining couple of scopes we have bought, we need to put these scopes well away, Andy. Well away. Why? Well away. You, over, you've lost him. There. Andy's gone. Andy's gone. He's, he's in he's his own new, world yeah, now. Right. Speaking of your own world, uh, I am often in my own world oh when I'm thinking gosh. about the bearded chap. Yeah. Saying, oh, my gosh. Not wrong. The bearded yeah. chap is a sponsor of the show. And uh, the bearded chap is, uh, is a, Queen, a Queensland company uh, and the owner is a shooter. Yep. Uh, fantastic people. I was up there the other week and, uh, and rad dudes. Um, and this is Sea Salt. So Ooh. if you're going to order your fish and chips, mm -hmm. definitely don't spray this on it because it's not what it's for. I was worried where you're oh. going with that. Yeah. So, but you guys can go if you want to. If you want to support the show, support a shooter who owns the, this business. Uh, you can go to thebeardedchap.com/impact or use the code impact, and you will be supporting the show, and you'll be supporting the owner uh, who is a shooter, which is a good thing to do. But mm -hmm. also, you will be getting yourself some absolute rad product. Now, this one here is one that I don't regularly use. Can't say I've. Used it myself. Right. However, for the right people, it is. Now, you know when mm. you go to the beach, Andy, oh. and you go out for a surf, right? Mm. If you, you're a surf type lad. More of a more of a bodyboarding. Bodyboarding, uh, yeah, okay. You know, body surfing even. Oh, right. Yeah, kind of affordable. There, just... <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Okay. Because you spend all your money yeah. at thebeardedchap.com. Yeah. Slash. Impact. impact. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so uh, you know you've been out you've been out yeah. in the salt water for the day. That's it. And you come back and you hear. Your hair's just got that just volume to it. That natural 
Yeah, the wave. surfer hair. Natural yeah. wave. That, it's no. great, isn't yep. it? You yeah. know, you know what I'm talking That's about. Though. You guys, yeah, yeah. you guys oh. at home, Josh. You know what I'm talking about. That's it. No, not really. Okay. Yeah. So he doesn't get outdoors much. Yeah. Yeah. And so you 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 go out and you've mm. got all that sort of salt stuff. This is this does that. Yeah. This achieves that with the out without yeah. the hours of embarrassment of falling off a surfboard. That's is right. Is it just salt water in a spray bottle? Spray bottle? No, it is not. No. Don't it say is not. That. Stop. Stop. The, for the There's story, much more involved. For the story yeah. and more products, visit, visit the beard Okay. Slash I'm going to go do that. I'm do curious that. now. Uh, so, this has sea salt texture spray. Mm. And what it's designed to do, I'm, I am, I, I believe this is correct. This is what it does for me anyway. You spray it in your hair, and it's got that sort of extra volume that your hair gets yep. uh, when you've you know, gone out surfing for a week. You know, you're down at the beach or whatever oh, it is. You're, you're being, a week you're being, surfing? Yeah. What, what yeah. don't. Solid. Okay, I mean, like I'm talking on Google, but um, uh, so you go out and, and that's what it does. So, mm. so Andy, take your hat off. Let's oh, let's put this go. in your. This is why we put the scopes aside. I'm going to put this one further aside. Here we go. <laughs> right now, yeah, I'm going to follow I'm the instructions so happy here. I had a shower and washed my hair for this. Yeah, <laughs> spray ten to twenty pumps of sea salt texture 10 to spray 20. onto semi dry or dry hair, loosely style or crunch hair with hands for natural, voluminous. And textured hairstyles. Repeat for stronger holds. All right, so here we go. The things one, I two, do. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. <laughs> so rub that through your <laughs> rub that through your hair. Yeah, see you look like a surfer. Look at this. It's just that. It's that surfer feel. It's oh. that gives you volume to your thingo that your stuff does stuff. Yeah, look at that. Oh man, you've just have you how was the surf? Great. Yeah. Did you hang ten? Gnarly. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look it gives you, you know, surfers are some of the most relaxed dude I've ever met. So if you want more relaxation in your life and you know, just chilled. You want to perform better at a PRS match and relax. You, you need a microphone for a podcast, just so you know. <laughs> I know you relax, man, but you yeah. can't you, yeah. there's, there's if, you, if you gotta, you know, Chill out and relax like a surfer dude and yeah, perform sure, better really at, at a PRS match. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The yeah. sea salt spray. Yeah. Sea salt spray. Anyway, thebeardachap.com slash impact. How's that? If you want to get your own sea salt Oops. spray. It smells nice too. Refreshing. Smells like yeah, re refreshing. Yeah. There's a TikTok in there. Righto. Oh. Cool. Speaking of refreshing, the Burris. The Burris XTR. <laughs> We're going to just bring that focus back onto what we're doing. Uh, if you want to stand this. out in the crowd, you could have surfer hair or, <laughs> or, or you could buy one of these. And uh, there's there's lots of things you notice about this one very quickly. There's the scope mm. I run, so I'm biased here. I like these scopes. Mm. Um, but the big thing, the feature that I particularly like on this scope, we've got Captain Windage and a few other bits and pieces, mm. is this turret here. All right? So this turret here, you can draw on it. I, re you know, and I like doing this in matches. You, you mm. come up to a stage, you design your stage, and then you write, okay, I'm going to hold here for the first target, second target, third target, or near and far, yeah. or whatever it might be. It just makes styling back and forth. You yep. don't have to remember numbers. Yep. You know, I can barely say visually. Mm. And so you, you, not remembering numbers is a significant advantage. I can mm. just visually look at where I've written on the turret, and yep. that's where I dialed it. Yep. Uh, and so... Uh, but also, you ready, Andy? Watching? You ready? I'm watching. You ready? Oh, just look at that. Magic. The turret has gone and disappeared. That's it. It is just come back. Um, I need to sell the smell of that salt. Oh, yes. Uh, and so, anyway, so you put that back on and you line it back up to your zero point and you drop back in and you're good to go. And so, what you can. That was so quick and easy. I thought so. And so, you've got uh, you got a standard one and then you've got this white one. And so, you, what I would do is I put my gun back in the rack, grab that, and then I write it up for the next stage. And then, when I get to the next stage, I push that down, line it up, squeeze it in, and away you go. So, I mean, I, look, I, I do know how to use this scope because I do use this scope. Um, <laughs> Very efficient. It's, it is good, isn't it? As someone that is fresh, though, I have used that on the XTR three. Not yes. removable, but it is writable. And <clears> being able to have all your stuff written down in your turret is so much easier than having your data cut off the side. Have you used you this just, scope? Yeah. I have not used that one. You're, going, you're shooting a match this. Well, what will have been a few weekends ago, yeah. but this weekend, you're going to use this scope. I'll set up for you. I'm using your gun, so I hope I'm using right, that scope. Cool. 
Sounds Can I please use that scope? Yeah, absolutely. Cool. cool. So uh, the joy is because because riding on it is one thing, but being able to take the, the turret away mm. with you and ride on it is very good. Yeah. Now, now that I've – this is my favourite turret that isn't the dialing thing from the Steiner. Um, this here, to set the zero stop, is the easiest zero stop I've ever set. Mm. Basically, you can do it with the turret. I don't recommend it, but you can do it with the turret. You can do it with or a piece of brass. Or a piece of brass. Yeah, yeah. See, Josh knows mm. what he's talking about. Um, piece of brass, you undo that latch, you adjust it, you do it back up, and away you go. You, go, mm. you would think in the reloading room we'd have some brass. We do actually have some brass I'm over there. Just waiting yeah. for you yeah. to oh, change okay. the zero. All right, all right, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the scope from your rifle, is it? Uh, it is not this one. Okay, but good, good. it's all good because you grab that, you put the piece of brass in, push that lever out, and that now moves without clicking. And so you put that in, line that back up wherever your zero point is, and that now clicks. That is my nice. That's why I run this scope. Is one of my well, one of the reasons I run this scope. This is my mm -hmm. favourite. All right, now Andy is sponsored by Carlos. I am not sponsored by Barras or Carlos or anyone else here. Um, but I, I particularly like that scope. Mm -hmm. I, I paid for it, and uh, and I yeah, I really enjoy it. One of the other little features on this one here yes. that I do like is. You may be familiar on the ocular size here. This is a reticle focus. Yes. And this is the European style focus. Yes. All right. Grab that night force back again. Grab the, the turret cap off. All right. Actually, you don't It'll even need loose, to. Loose you, don't even, you don't even need to. You don't even need to on that one. Because this here is the European style, which is always adjustable, right? Mm. Really good. You get it to exactly where you want it. And then someone else grabs your gun, like Josh, some short little person, and they tweak it a little bit, and then you like can't see a reticle anymore. Yep, understandable. The night force is fantastic here. Yes. Because this whole back area here is locked. Yep. Right? That's your reticle focus. You wind that wherever you need to. You put this locking ring in. And then little people like Josh, not strong enough to break the lock on it. So they can't mm. adjust it accordingly. And so you get the reticle focus for how you want it. And Josh has to deal with it because he hasn't bought a gun yet. That's it. Right. So that <laughs> works out well. Except. The Barris is the happy medium, I think, Ooh, watch out. because it has this little locking ring here. Ah. That despite this being a European style, quick adjust on the uh, the, the mm -hmm. reticle focus. Once you lock this bad boy off, that one's not moving. Fancy, and fancy. Josh is sitting there for hours, going, "I can't see the reticle. Yeah. Let me shoot. Let me." And you're like, "No, mate." That's no. why I've been missing so much all mm. these years. That's the only reason. Yeah, yep. that's the only reason. So. I believe it. Yeah. So anyway, that's I, one, one other little feature I like this. Now, that's I'm going to cool. know more of the features of this because I, I have the scope. So, uh, you know, I, I'm telling you guys yeah. all that I'm biased on this one. I like this one a lot. But yeah. anyway, that's the, the, the virus and some of the features I like. That's pretty that. cool. Now, the, you – Illumination? Sorry, yeah, illumination. Yeah, yep. yeah all, the, yep. all the standard things you would expect. From I have this. a question. With, with illumination, do yes. you use the illumination during a match? Y no. Yes. No. Yes. Sometimes. Rarely. But I have <laughs> – <laughs> very rarely. But I have once or twice – I didn't go anywhere near where um, I was to go. I'd say the only time I look for that. Only times I've used it uh, would have been in like a foggy, foggy sort of condition. Was it a foggy condition? Yeah. Is it just when target identification is a little harder? Is no. It's, just it's when it's when you're struggling to not a not a foggy condition. I mean, sorry, a dark condition. Yeah. Um, and when, when the, lights a struggle. Yeah, lights a struggle, or when the target is is. And you beat, beat up so much <laughs> that you've got no <laughs> contrast between the dark coloured target or the background and yep. your reticle. So, um, yeah, it's been a couple of times where I've just put it on real dim. Um, so when you put your reticle over the target, you're like, oh, there's, there are my graduations. Yeah. True. Oh. Yeah. Now, Andy, you've grabbed a scope that uh, I don't think Josh expect you to grab. No. I might have grabbed one that you didn't expect me to grab either. Mm. You both definitely did. Yeah. We yep. thought we'd throw a, a curveball in there because not all of our viewers no. – uh, deep in the PRS world no. or long range. And so some other scopes that mm -hmm. we, we should probably cover the features that they don't have that we've talked about Yes, and then why we grabbed them. Yep. So we'll let you go first. All right. So we've got the Burris Eliminator 3. Five. Three. Oh, did you not grab the five? You went old school. Was there a five? There is a five. This is the three. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. Um. Now, I haven't had any hands-on experience with these really, but from what I understand is there is an onboard ballistic calculator. Correct. Uh, the, five, envir the five is better than the three in that regard, but yes. Yeah, cool. Um, there's also environmental uh, sensors. On the five, yeah. On the five, cool. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, is there a laser, a laser rangefinder 
On all of them, yes. On all of them. So this sort of optic towards the hunting game mm -hmm. uh, would be pretty amazing. Mm. You see a target, you have a look at it, you range it, and it will just work out your dope and it will display your dope or where you have to aim on the reticle. It will, yeah. So, so I feel like that explains why the turrets – are the way they are is mm -hmm. once you've zeroed it, you leave it yep. and you don't touch them again. Yep. Um, is that for a battery or touchpad or their controls under there? I'm not totally sure, but <laughs> anyway, there's a bunch of little buttons here. I prefer to see you struggle. It's fun. And there's <laughs> uh, your parallax is up the front, your zooms at the back. Um, like I said, I haven't had much experience with these, but yeah. from my understanding, that's that's yeah. what they offer. They I, give you a, a – so when we went downstairs, I said, grab something that you find interesting. You grab mm. this one very quickly because mm. this is a, this is an interesting scope. Now, mm. that is a uh, a cover there, and that is where the your battery. battery will live. Cool. Right? So, done well. Um, these are, yeah, these are very unique scopes where they got built in laser range finder, and this is the third, and there's a fourth, and there's a fifth. And, mm -hmm. and they they sort of keep increasing the the, the the range finder range, they keep increasing sort of the accuracy of the data. Yep. So, you know, originally there were profiles that you would sort of select the closest profile. Yep. Now they're a lot closer in terms of your data. they got some sort of uh, sensors on board to sort of pick up some things. Yeah. They are a, a, a wonderful option for like that two to 300 meter, maybe maybe mm -hmm. 400 if you do it right yep. type thing uh, where you press the button, it tells you to hold here, you hold here and away you go. It doesn't yep. take into account wind. Yes. So you can still get caught out by wind. Yep. But uh, for those sort of things, for sure. Yeah. Would you recommend it for a PRS match? No. Never. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Why? Um, because it, it's so on paper and, and yep. legitimately have been asked this. Yep. You know, like you got this thing and it can range find your target and it yep. tells you where to hold. Why wouldn't you use it for a PRS match? I think one of the big reasons is a PRS match, you're given distances. Sure. And you are – working out those datas that you drop in your data before you start the stage. Mm -hmm. And during a stage, you won't have time to range targets, find targets and then range them. So, now, 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 I'll play yeah. devil's advocate for a second. Mm -hmm. uh, you press one button and it tells you all that data. You haven't got time for that? Mm. Well, I don't know. I, th I feel like it's an extra step, but then again, looking over to your data card and dialing is an extra mm -hmm. step. I, I, I would agree. Mm. I, I think mm. they're a terrible idea to run in a match. Mm. And the reason for that, and so so what you raise up is a good point actually. Mm. So so let's let's touch on that. So being able to work out your data prior, going mm -hmm. through the stage, sort of mentally prepping like you do this, then you dial, then you do this, then you dial. Mm -hmm. These are all accurate things. You also don't have a reticle in here that has sort of any windage hole. Oh, it does have some windage holes on there, but mm. limited in what the information it gives you. Is that first focal plane? Uh, As you zoom in, I prove – Presume it, would it is probably... not first vocal plane. Okay, no, it is not first vocal plane. Yeah, um, but one of the things. So th these are these are great scope for the right application. As with with any mm. of these ones we've grabbed here, mm. some of these scopes would be horrible to hunt with. Yeah, right. Depending on the type of hunting you're doing. Yep. Imagine trying to stalk deer with an ATAC R seven thirty five. Yeah, I mean, you'd be able to see it. Great. You, well, but... I mean, you might be able to, but if it's fifty meters away and you're in seven <laughs> power minimum. <laughs> With, an, with a tremor in front of yeah, it, yeah, yeah. it might be challenging. So, so again, it's always <laughs> down to the purpose of use. But yep. the, one of the dramas of this is that this will give you a great reading mm. on a pig at 350 metres, yep. right? But if, if you remember the last episode, we are talking about the finale match, yeah. we were shooting 75 metre targets, like 400 metres. 75 or, mil? 75 or, metre. Or, more, mil. Mil mil is what I meant. Millimetre, yep. Mil yep. metre targets. Yep. This is the, the data in the, – the data – um, deployment of this is yep. not accurate enough to be reliable at that distance. It yep. doesn't have True. it's got it doesn't have the the finer graduations mm -hmm. and those reticle holds to, to do that. And so you 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 uh, you are certainly hamstringing yourself by using something on like this in yeah, PRS match. Maybe at a club match, maybe your first one. Go along and have fun and enjoy yourself for sure. But don't buy this for that. You know? Yep. So those graduations yeah. are um, in one mil holds. Yeah, or, it might in along the center. It might give you a little bit more yeah. than that, but yeah, 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 correct. So it's it's yep. not really ideal, but you know, again, it's a, it's an interesting scope. It's got yeah. a lot of features that that for the right purpose of use is good. And yep. this is the same reason why I grabbed a Hick Micro Stellar, which is a thermal optic, which is definitely not what we're running for PRS. I don't know. I kind of want to see you shoot a match with it, though. <laughs> I kind of want to shoot a match with this. There's a match on the weekend. I haven't registered for it yet, but I can tomorrow. Here, ever. <laughs> uh, 
Anyway, anyway. So, <laughs> think about that. Um, and so I grabbed a thermal because mm-hmm. so much of what we talked about doesn't relate to this. No. And so it, thermals have become extremely popular for the hunting side of things. Yep. And in all honesty, they have significantly changed things, particularly for spotlighting, particularly yep. for that sort of thing, because you are seeing effectively what you have is a camera and a screen. That's it. And, and you, you, you don't have – you have optical components, of course, in the camera, uh, as I'm sure Josh will attest to. And screens matter a fair bit. That's why he's looking at 16 of them right now. Yep. But the, the, uh, there's sort of factors in here where you, could, you can apply a digital mm. first focal plane scope mm. or, or a second focal plane scope. Um, the zero stop is all digital. I mean, it, it remembers where your zero is and just you can press a button and go back yep. to it type yep. thing. Uh, these are these – are, very different sort of mentality. Now, one of the reasons I brought this in is because at some point I think that optics are going to go this way. Yeah, okay. Yep. I think that the, the quality will increase significantly enough, not thermal, mm. but just day optics will get digital. Yeah. Right. Now, we, we could be a while down the pathway yep. and, and all these sort of things, but with this this stuff proceeding where it is, like mm. this is going to be – I mean, with, I'm not I'm – not, like, this is not anything revolutionary. We've seen the tracking point stuff. Yep. If you're not familiar with that, there's there's scopes there. It'll sort of you know will will uh, do all the math for you and hold yep. you up and, and even have elements of laser wind reading. And they will uh, pick all of this up and and they're not allowed you to pull the trigger until it's actually on. Yep. Right, this stuff exists. It's yep. not sort of fantasy sort of gear. Now it's not cheap mm. and it's not realistic at this point, but this stuff exists and this stuff is is. Inbound in time, uh, and so we we will see more and more hybrids of, of these scopes yep. start interfacing with some of like the heads up display. I mean, the Revit true, does true. this well, like with heads up displays and bits and pieces will come more and more into it. But I think in time that we will trend more this way. Yeah. I mean, we're not going to trend the other way. We're not no. going to get away from a digital element. Yep. So I definitely think, like we covered before in the oh, yeah, you're right with yeah. the with your um. Level, level I mean, indicators. There's a very, and very easy deployment of, of, of putting some sort of level indicator yeah. as a heads-up display inside your scope yeah. as a digital readout. Makes a lot of sense. And I'm not sure if it was a SIG or not, but I do believe I've seen other ones where you can look through your reticle and you can dial and it will show you the yeah. the numbers as well. What you're that is like the um, – is it the Steiner – um, MX7 oh, yeah. IFS? The IFS, yeah, okay. yeah, that's right. Yeah, there's elements of that, absolutely. So this stuff is is happening. Yes. Yep. Right, there's just often cost prohib- prohibitive, but mm. we know what technology does, it gets cheaper. It's going to get there. And so I, I guess I brought the thermal up as a bit of a nod to those guys who are into hunting and watch the yep. show. And, you know, these, these are yeah, particularly the, the Hick Micro Stellas are an awesome piece of kit, mm-hmm. really, really nice and, and a good option. But there is, there is, we are heading more and more towards a crossover. And there'll be guys who are just like, oh, yeah, that's a rubbish idea and we should never do that. And this. Yeah, yeah. But there, we, we know how things, I mean, we're, we both got one of these pretty close. Yeah. Uh, you know, we know how these things go. Oh, See. we're getting a gin delivery soon. Yes. Yeah, I thought you'd be excited, Josh. Anyway, um, <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the oh, I'm totally distracted. I wonder what gin we're getting. Lester's cans. When it's when is it tomorrow? I don't know. <laughs> I, don't know. I didn't look that <laughs> I'm close. Just, I'm ready. I'm just going to sleep here, just to right. make sure it gets here in the morning. That's exactly right. Be ready to go when it arrives. So, but but people will be like, oh no, it's not mm. never going to happen. It's going to happen. We know yep. it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Eventually, so many will. that's it. Exactly do, right. Do you think that the daytime optics will go f- ever go mm. fully digital, or there'll be some element of just a hybrid? Hmm, that's a good question, Josh. Because there's, there's, I guess, coming from that camera side of the world. Yes. Um, your digital is good, but I guess if you're getting sort of to that thirty-five power range on scopes mm. to achieve that in a scope form function of digital, mm. that would be a very, very impressive feat. Mm. So, no, coming from the camera world, is you need a lot of glass in between your digital sensor mm-hmm. to get that distance. I think hybrid is 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 the balance. I think yeah. that that's yeah. the way we've seen it with phones. We've seen it with all sorts of things. Um, you, I mean, look these these are you could claim these are hybrid as well. I mean, these have glass in them. They, mm. they have a they have a camera effectively the, the front end of them. Mm. So we, we're not going to get away from. I, I guess I'm not I'm not suggesting we get away from that. The the eliminator is is a is a scope mm. predominantly. It's always going to be the hybrid mix. Yeah. You know, with cameras, we haven't gone from SLRs to digital SLRs and got done away with glass. We're always mm. going to have that element. Um, but what I, I guess I'm saying is there's going to be much more digital 
components. Do, do you think it. you get to, we'll get to a point where it's an all in one package? Hundred percent, we will. Yeah. Yeah. So you just you buy one scope, and that is your periscope to your hunting scope. It just oh, does. Oh, okay, all okay. Um, I don't think so. Otherwise, you'd have an all in one shoe by now. I think there are form factors. So if we if we go back to the. Uh, <laughs> I, I missed how great that quote was. <laughs> and all in that's one all right. Shoe. It'll come back up again. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah, you, you don't have an all in one car. Yeah. You don't have an all in one phone. We have, you know, we we you know, we run iPhones and there's a there's a pro and a pro big max thing a large one and a and a mini one and a small like there's all different sizes and so many cameras. I mean what we've got like fifteen hundred cameras in this room mm. and they're different sizes and different purposes and stuff like that. I guess I guess I, I guess Purely yeah. having different brands and companies out there making them will just dictate that you can't have an all-in-one. Yeah. Like, You're going to want mm. to have a big, nice, chunky turret. The guys who want a big, chunky turret are going to always want a big, chunky turret. Mm. And so particularly ones with bad eyes. And so you're going to have those elements that are, that are, that are factors. So I don't think you're going to have like the generic single scope for everyone yeah. that does all the things. I think there's going to be a lot more crossover for sure. And you might have a hunting mode you can go into, which, you know, maybe yeah. simplify some things and bits and pieces. Mm. But uh, I think there's some physical factors that won't be eliminated mm. out of it. So, wow, we got – I did not expect for us to get into like the futuristic <laughs> predictions of where things were going to go in the optics industry. But uh, here That's we it. are. That's it. Here we are. So we will either play these segments back in 10 or 15 years when they yep. come true or we'll just delete them and forget we ever saw That's them. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, right, so if you guys uh, enjoyed watching uh, what was uh, right and wrong, you will love our next episode, which is the Golden Yeats. That's it. <laughs> which is mostly going to be wrong. But we uh, we got all these categories. You guys can go on the impactdynamics.com and mm -hmm. – no, sorry, impactdynamics.com.au and go and vote for all the categories and, and bits and pieces. You see them all up on there or watch our last episode for Explainer or go and check out the video on Impact Dynamics that explains all the different categories and, and goes through details on mm -hmm. that. Uh, and on the 16th of, uh, 16th of December – we will be in this room. That's and if it. You're, you're local, you can come along and visually watch us. <laughs> yes, exactly right. <laughs> uh, and you can look at the scopes downstairs if you want to. Yeah. And we will be uh, golden yeeting ourselves around the uh, the building uh, that evening. So we look forward to having you guys physically here, live on uh, on the YouTube and Facebook and other That's mechanisms. It. Visually and watching. Visually watching, <laughs> and we look forward to a visually watching you. That's hmm. creepy. Let's go. We'll